Good day and welcome to your favorite sport program on TV Plus Sport. This will be an interesting moment on the um, on the show. I'm sure you've seen the um, the, the taste of what to come on the show at um, the Australia Open, giving um, Rafael Nadal a tribute to one of the most interesting and um, the greatest of all, um, Agriebu. Um, in the game of tennis. I'm Muda Shushitu. I will be anchoring in the next um, few minutes as we look at an um, interesting moment um, in the world of sport. But today our focus will be one sport that is striving, that is developing and trying to make sure that it's always is also in the same level, in the same realm with the sport like tennis, with sport like table tennis, football, basketball in Nigeria and that's actually so many um, events coming up um, in the country today as regards to actually actually a sport that um, in the past you probably won't um, talk about it this been so it's not for the grassroots it's for the elites it's for this and that so that's why we're having Damiola um, Shola Demi um, who is a member of um, the Nigeria actually team he has done so well for himself if you google Damiola um, Shala Demi, he has, he has given NGO medals in international archery competition. He's our guest and he's also a member of um, the ARC Archery um, Club in Abuja. Um, it, it's good to, let, let's welcome, let's welcome um, Damilola onto the show. Yes, um, interesting to know that this is the second time you're on the show and um, apart from what you do privately, you are publicly known as um, a member of um, Team Nigeria, actually the national team, and um, you've given Nigeria medals in some in, in international competition uh, when it comes to um, archery. And you're also a member, like I said earlier, that you're a member of ARC Archery um, Club, that um, a, an archery club in Abuja. So, um, Damlela, we're focusing on why that in all the efforts you and few of your colleagues have been putting together, there's still so much that needs to be done about um, the sport archery. Uh, tell us, I'm sure a lot of um, viewers across the globe because you are, we are presently watched in um, almost um, more than 40 um, African um, countries. So, you tell us the challenges of um, the challenges of archery um, in Nigeria. All right, thank you very much for having me on the show. And as always, I would like to appreciate your TV channel and you in particular for promoting the sports of archery in, in Nigeria and across Africa. Uh, for starters, I, I would like to say that uh, the challenge we're having with, uh, that we have with archery at the moment, uh, the challenges we may divide them into two different um, segments. You know, we have that that comes from administration, uh, both local administration within archery itself and the government and then the other component of the challenge will be from private sector and uh, private individuals so first and foremost um, regarding the challenge from government there hasn't been enough uh, government support for archery uh, probably because archery is not popular like other uh, team sports like football, basketball, and all the other popular ones that we have. So what ends up happening is um, government agencies and um, ministries end up focusing on those popular sports. And I think, I, like I said the last time I was on your show, I explained that you have well, maybe like 20 or more people come up for a team, a football team, and everybody gets one medal at the end of the day. But I can guarantee you, if you have 20 archers, they will have more than one medal. And it's um, more cost effective to have um, to promote individual sports like archery, where you are guaranteed medals, irrespective of um, participation. So uh, primarily, there hasn't been so much government support or funding for archery in Nigeria, I think, uh, since it is inception, so to speak. Uh, most archers that have uh, given to Nigeria have done so individually. Some would give their best at some point, they get tired and they just stop. Because um, it's in, uh, like most sports, it requires funding, you know, to a certain degree. So I think along the way, most people have given their best and stopped at some point. And, um, but interestingly, since my team and I have come out to this show on the scene since um, 2020, during the COVID, we've just told ourselves, you know what? We've given ourselves some years that would work towards um, 
building archery in Nigeria. Then um, the other components of some of the challenges we are facing is that um, until your TV station and a few others have decided to show interest in archery, we've had very little coverage about archery events. Even when we are having archery events and we reach out to media, both print, online and um, terrestrial channels and uh, satellite channels, most of them, they'll tell us who watches archery, who cares about archery. So um, the media hasn't done so well until you guys showed up and a few others to promote the sport of archery in Nigeria. They would rather, well, I mean, without bias, I'm a fan of one of the clubs in Europe, but without bias, they would rather show um, European matches or do highlights or talks about games happening far away in Saudi Arabia or in um, or even maybe South America, as opposed to promoting our own sports actually here in Nigeria. So I think the media hasn't been very um, up and coming, up and doing rather in that area. Then we also have the issue of um, sponsorship. Most companies we've been to, I can say that in the last four or five years, we've probably spoken to about 115 or 120 companies in Nigeria you know, regarding promoting archery, either when we're going for um, continental championships, um, both South Africa, Tunisia, and the times we went to um, Cote d'Ivoire, and other national championships that we've been having, most of them would tell you who watches archery, who cares about archery, you know. They could be that blunt, and some will just outrightly not listen to you. Uh, like we all know, sports requires uh, the private sector component if it needs to grow, if it needs to flourish anywhere in the world. And if we do not have active participation or active support from the private sector, sports, sports actually would not grow in Nigeria. In the, few, in the last few years, my colleagues and I have spoken to um, archery manufacturers, those that manufacture archery equipment, and most of them will tell you, uh, we don't know about you guys, we don't know what you do. And we try to explain, we've done this, we've done that, but then again, um, they would need to see evidence of media coverage. And if there's no media coverage, it's almost as though you're winking at someone in the dark, you know. So, yeah, um, those are, that has been some of the major components of the challenge we've been facing. And um, part of our goal is to raise, to work on the grassroots components of sports. So, and to do that is you have to speak to young ones. There has to be active young, uh, participation of young people in it. And it's sometimes challenging to convince parents to register their children for archery when they haven't seen role models of archery on TV. Again, like I said, it's a feedback loop. Government doesn't support, you can't do much, there's no media coverage, nobody knows how great you're doing. So how do I explain to a parent that, okay, I am XYZ, I have been to a number of continental championships and won medals for Nigeria, I have participated in archery competitions uh, all over the world. Uh, I want to. I want your child or your son or your daughter to sign up to be the next archery star. And the next question they'll ask is, "Who are you?" We don't know you. So those are just uh, like a summary of some of the challenges we're having. And I believe that if we can have all these various little moving parts come together, nice and tight, I, I think we can promote archery better in Nigeria. I hope that works. That answers your question. Even beyond that, but how do you surmount all these challenges? How do you overcome all these issues and still come forward? And we still have the likes of Emmanuel Yeleke, you yourself, Tayo, still doing competition and all that. How do you do that? What drives you to overcome all these audios you've just mentioned? What was, what was that thing? I mean, obviously, there's not so much money making in, in the sport right now in the country, but what drives you that you and your your club in Abuja, the Zen Archery Club in Lagos. What was the motivating factor here? Thank you. Um, this particular author and activist is past now, Franz Fanon. He said, and I quote, there's nothing as powerful as an idea whose time has come. You know, so which means that it's, it's time for archery to just arise in Nigeria. You know, it's been around, you know, on and off, on and off. But uh, fortunately enough, you know, some of us picked it up in 2020 and when we saw it, we made some form of um, an informal pact with ourselves and we said, you know what, we love this sport we are doing. How can we get this across to everybody in Nigeria, to every local government? And uh, I think what drives you is a vision, a dream and a plan. People can dream all day. If you do not get up, 
you know, to articulate that vision, it will never work. And how does that, how would that happen? Have a plan. Plan A, B, C. Some will tell you have your plan from A or to Z. So we set out a plan. We listed the things we needed to do. And we started ticking them off one after the other. Now, some of our motivating factor is this. Uh, for quite a number of us that are pushing our tree at the moment, we've been involved in other things we've done in the past, and okay. we have been successful in those things. Mm -hmm. So what we have simply done is we've brought in the experience from um, those successes we've had into archery. Um, it's one thing to just shoot arrows. You know, it's another thing to be deliberate about it. And what were the things that we did? We told ourselves, okay, let's get the right set of equipment. In most cases, some of us will have to save. Like we used to say in secondary school, we'll save our lunch money. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, save sure. towards it. And we asked ourselves, okay, these equipment, how can we get affordable equipment that we can use to teach other people? I mean, it's just like uh, golfing or driving a car. You can either buy a very high-end car or you buy an affordable knock-around car. So what we did was we went to manufacturers, got equipment that are affordable that we can use in teaching lots of people. And even if we sustained damages on those equipment, we wouldn't feel the impact as much. Yeah. So in terms of saving costs, that was one of the approaches that we did. Uh, one of the other things that we also did was we told ourselves, how do we develop capacity mm. in archery? So what we did was, um, there, there are a few archery coaches in Nigeria, Okay. you know, maybe not what we want, but just here and there, we spoke to those ones, we learned what we could learn, we... We, I think I've told you before, we rely heavily on YouTube videos. Yeah. And every time we went out for competitions, we'll speak to people who have been competing for the last 10, 20 years. Mm. We'll speak to them, we'll learn, we'll take notes, come back to Nigeria, implement everything we have learned. And I think importantly, we learned not to take no for an answer. Mm. Whenever we had to do something, we'd have to speak to people. We've been trying to die a lot of times. But what we kept doing was we said, you know what, we have a goal, we have a dream. Um, right now, we in Abuja alone, we have about four private archery clubs. Okay. And they are all connected to Arch Archery Club because they are all members of Arch Archery Club. Um, same thing in the Southwest. Right now in the Southwest, we have like two or three prominent archery clubs. Now, some of these clubs did not exist. In fact, prior to us coming on stage, there was no serious archery club you know in the north in the northern part of the country okay you know mm. right now we have a branch in kaduna um that's ariwa ariwa archery club we also have some in abuja shooters we have scorpion archery we have firefly archery uh, you know we have them all over all connected to us because part of our dream was let's grow this grassroots as like i said there's a plan there's a vision we laid it out straight and we are ticking them off one after the other we are being very deliberate with everything that we do. Okay, interesting, interesting. Yeah, you. you're, you're almost making me become an usher. I mean, with the way you, you, <laughs> with the way you analyze that. But there's so much um, to talk about. Um, what do you think government, the private sectors should do to, to, to make sure that um, it reduces the challenges that um, archers actually are facing i mean you guys have done so well but you can't just carry the burden of a nation in a particular spot by yourself you've done so well to split the half clubs in abuja to have club in lagos like you said the one in um, kaduna arewa um you mentioned our yes. arewa um archery club yes. all these Iowa, things just yeah i want nights yeah okay. i want nights in kaduna Oh, okay. All these things are, are, are clubs, but what, what do you think should be put in place beyond you guys so that they can have, um, it can be smooth sailing, not just for, for, for you and your, your, your friends, uh, also for those that really want to be part of the sport in the next future. What, what do you think government should do or private sector should do? All right, thank you. Um, okay, first and foremost, from the uh, government, uh, from exactly. the government angle, I know right now the defense team, the Nigerian um, defense uh, headquarters, they have an archery team which comprises of archers from Air Force, Navy, and the Army, which is good. Now, what, what I'm trying to say is each go government parastatals that are sports inclined can start developing their own team. Mm -hmm. I know the Nigerian police has a team. I'm not setting about the civil defense, prisons, and other ones. Now, if all those parastatals, for starters, start having individual teams. That means we're having more archers 
on the scene. Okay. Secondly, I think um, now we don't have a Ministry of Sports anymore, you know, um, but the new coordinating body should be, should actively work on having a sports uh, oversight on archery, on archery oversight in the country. Yeah. Because um, so for the last, since its inception, um, archery has not been directly under the federal government. You know, it's, it's a federation, but it's not, it's, it's not had that government oversight. So I think it's important for that oversight to occur because what happens every time is we, whenever we reach out to them for sponsorship, they tell you, well, sorry, officially, we don't know who you guys are. You know, so I, th I think that when that has to be addressed. So if we can have proper government oversight and not just oversight in theoretical terms, there has to be um, phys proper administration, proper administration, both in terms of uh, having how things go, have a plan. Like uh, Korea, for example, Korea okay. is like the best archery nation in the world. Yeah. They have like the when. Korea hosted um, the Olympics in 88, that's Seoul 88. Okay. Prior to hosting in Seoul 88, they didn't have a serious archery team. So they told themselves, you know what? We are hosting the Olympics. Let's look for a few sports that we can own. And that was the birth of serious archery, uh, Olympic competition archery, you know, for Korea. And since 88, Korea has remained dominant in, um, in awesome. archery. Sometimes you have India and the rest, but Korea still stays. And that is because uh, Korean government and their sports um, so administration have a deliberate plan for archery in particular. Okay. Their archers are top notch. I don't know if you watched the last Olympics. They were okay. actually, they showed us the robots that monitor the heart rates of the archers while they are shooting during yeah. practice. Yeah. You know, so that's the level of dedication they've put into it. So uh, regarding the government, there has to be deliberate funding. There has to be a deliberate plan for archery, not just, oh, Olympics, Olympics is around the corner. Let's get archers. Let's go. No, there has to be like a ten-year plan. Like the U.S. has what they call um, what they call the Junior Olympics uh, program. That is, they start training you from before you are ten, hoping that by the time you are twenty-one, you should be ripe enough to compete at the Olympics and do well. So that's the kind of plan we have. I don't know whatever plan they have for soccer, but for for archery, it has to start from that age of nine, ten. So there has to be a federal government plan for that. Okay. Um, now, regarding the private sector, I understand, um, I mean, it's private sector. Everybody wants more, more cash for more output, return on investments, you know, so they would naturally want to tend towards uh, the popular sports. However, actually is new, it's growing. It would be a wonderful opportunity for different brands around the world, sorry, different brands in Nigeria right now to latch onto archery it's an untapped area and use that as a springboard. You know, uh, I don't want to mention companies in particular, but there are companies in Nigeria whose um, mother agent, mother companies outside the outside Nigeria sponsor archery actively. Oh, okay. But the Nigeria, they, they don't they don't do that. So I think this is an opportunity for the private sector. It's a low hanging fruit. Why? You already have champions. African champions are around, international archers are here, and you don't have to spend as much promoting it the way you'd have to do with soccer, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, private sponsorship uh, in terms of um, sponsoring to different world championships, purchase of equipment, good trainings, and the return on investment is awesome. Like I said, you already have ready-made archers, and okay. in collaboration with private archer and private companies, we can always discuss some form of grassroots promotion, okay. just like we had uh, Pepsi Academy back in the 90s, you know. I think it's something that we can do easily, yeah. Well, well said, well said. That's why you're, you're a proper fit for, for, for this topic. I'm sure you've really given us. But before oh, we go to the next topic, um, our next topic yeah. is on the, the 2024 Archery Championship. But before we go to the next topic, how optimistic are you about the future relating it to the states where archery is right now? How optimistic are you about the future? Oh, thank you. Um, I'm very optimistic. I mean, considering the fact that um, uh, four four years ago, we have not had any at the African Championships. Four years ago, we've not been winning medals. Four years ago, people outside the country didn't know Nigeria had a national team. Although we did have people representing the country, but we are not a name to They're be not formidable uh, at that about. time. 
Oh yes, we're not. I mean, at the um, West African Championships that we went for, West and East African Championships, we came second after the host country, Cote d'Ivoire. And with 16 medals, understandably so, Cote d'Ivoire has been, they've been great in archery since forever, you know, so yeah. If we've been able to do this much in the last four years with very little or zero government support and um, little or very little or minimal support from the private sector, you know, I think we can do a whole lot more by the time we combine government funding, private sector funding and increased um, support from media stations like yours. You know, I, I, I think we can do a whole lot more, even more, I dare to say we can do a whole lot more than even some established sports that we already have in Nigeria. Okay. Yeah, what, whole lot. yeah, well said. Yeah. Well, well said. I, I get to you properly. We turn as much as possible to go away from the challenges of archery in Nigeria. That's uh, for the first topic. And our second topic is on um, the 2024 Arc Archery Ch Open Championship. And um, it took place, um, we also know about what happened last year at the 2023 um, Arc um, Archery Open Championship. Let's look at the 2024 Arc Archery Open Championship, which is our next topic right now. And um, tell us, what should we be expecting? Because I think it's about participation and tell us what we should be expecting this year. All right, thank you very much. The Arch Archery Open Championship will be taking place from the 8th to 10th of November at uh, our range, our home range. It's uh, at along Accra Street at uh, we'll say Zone 5. Uh, we'll be expecting archers from about 8 to 10 different archery clubs from all over the country. We have people coming in, flying in from south, south, southwest, north central, you know, northwest, then uh, Abuja in itself. Then we have people flying in from uh, the northeast too. So it's going to be a big championship. It's uh, arguably the biggest archery championship we have in the country at the moment, with all humility of heart. And um, interestingly, most of the participants are also will be competing against ourselves. Most of us are members of the national team, you know, so. Um, I mean, it's a, I hate to say it, but we have to compete against one another, you know, yeah. So uh, we're expecting some of the best archers to, to be there in the country. We're originally trying to, we had initially tried to get in archers um, that are supposed to fly in from outside the country, from within Africa, but unfortunately they couldn't uh, process their visa early enough. Otherwise, we're expecting from we're expecting from Zimbabwe, we're expecting from Sudan, we're expecting from a few other uh, countries too. Yeah, so, but a bit of administrative problems on that on that end. Uh, we're expecting um, competition in different categories. We'll be having compound bow events, which is which is like my main area that I compete in. Uh, we'll be expected, we'll be part participants will come in for bear bow, then the Olympic recurve, so these are will be shot at different distances. We have a beginner category for individuals who are enthusiastic, they like it, they've probably done it a few times and they want to just test and see what it feels like to compete. But that will be at 20 meters. So uh, for those who have been who can even think they can just come and try try themselves out, you know, they can come in for the 20 meter category. Well, for those who have been shooting for a while, can try the 30 meters. Now for the for the big guns, right? We'll be shooting fifty and seventy meter uh, distances. We're expecting it to be all fireworks. And okay. um, like I told you, we're having uh, the defense team is coming on board in preparation for the um, African military games coming up. So the Nigerian defense team will be around to you know display their nuclear capability. Okay. And we also have uh, Zen is coming. Where Leke is leading his team from Lagos. We have King's Men actually coming in from Oyo State, which, uh, like I told you the last time, um, I'm also the state coach for Oyo State Archery. Okay. Uh, King's Men will be coming in. We have Firefly Initiative coming. We have Scorpion Archery coming in. Uh, the Shooters Archery team coming in too. Ari One Knights are coming in. We have uh, the team coming in from Joss. Then we have a few independent archers here and there who are just, everybody's just coming to shoot for glory. And okay. um, arguably, Arch Archery Team Club has the best medals to be presented every, in Nigerian sports. Um, 
maybe after this event, we can unveil it now. We'll probably have you have a look at one. Uh, so our medals in itself, the quality of the medals are usually things that archers come for. If for nothing, everybody wants to have those medals. You oh, know, okay. they are what they are very nice keepsakes that you can have. Well, well said, well said, and uh, I'm sure that. Uh, but what, what's the purpose of, of 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 this championship every year? There must be reasons why you guys are bringing. Is this still to promote archery? Tell us the purpose and what you tend to achieve. Um, is it still to propagate um, the gospel? Let me use that word of um, archery. So, of what purpose is, is this year, and why, why why is it sort of unique than um, than last year's edition? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, like I'd always said, uh, as part of our sole purpose of promoting grassroots um, archery events in Nigeria, initially when we started off our competitions from 2021, we started off small distances and um, we were lax with some of the um, rules because we needed encouragement. This time around, we are shooting, we are, the competition is designed according to world archery standards. Okay. You know, we are not we are not going anything less. So we are trying to replicate the conditions you would have at the at an international event. And the best way to grow sport, fine, I understand there's a need to be a bit relaxed with some things, but the best way to grow and prepare your people for international competitions is to simulate the same conditions they would find outside the country, within the country. So that's what we are doing. That's why this uh, competition is different. That's why it's unique. We are shooting according to world archery standards and um, as much as possible we want archers to have that feel of what it's like to shoot internationally without leaving the shores of the country okay In interesting and um, the video you've been seeing is um the zen archery open championship um i, I also know um I'm, I'm talking to our viewers i'm sure they're all listening and also you to let them know but are you are you still using is, is your space you're using for 2024 um, is it as uh, is it going to be something similar to that Telsin by Logan Stadium of the video you see now? I'm sure you'll be seeing the video mm -hmm. often um, because I've seen your space, the Archie um, Arch, and I also noticed for a while that um, every Archie Championship and every Archie competition needs mm -hmm. a wild out space. Uh, are you adding more to the space? I always see about um, I always see as regards to the Arch, um, Archie Open Championship. Because you, you, oh, yeah, you, you have mentioned that um, we'll also be expecting that this will probably be the biggest. So I'm, I'm wondering, is it going to be in big in terms of space or big in terms of participation? Oh, yes. Um, we've acquired um, a new space compared to the, uh, the last one you saw. So the last one you saw is what we have for walking. That's people who just come, you know, pay a token, shoot a little bit, take pictures for the Instagram and leave. We've acquired the bigger space, which is specifically for people who are really interested in shooting and um, the space we've acquired would help us simulate um, the wind conditions of shooting internationally uh, oh, one of the secrets of the like i always refer to the korean team one of their secrets at the last olympic was when they found out where the uh, archery event would hold you know they went back to korea looked for a place that was similar to that. They simulated wind conditions, simulated everything, and had their people train there. So what the space we have now can help us is open enough to help simulate what wind conditions would be like. You know, it is not closed off, so you can't have wind. So we're expecting all of that to, to happen. So hence uh, the bigger space we have now. So it's a lot bigger than the last one that you saw. And, and you rightly said um, inclusiveness. We, we saw in the last championship, in the Zen Archery Championship, about um, the special need people were also participating. We see people on the um, wheelchair participating. And we also know that um, we've seen young boys and young girls, which is another way of making it very inclusive, another way of promoting the sport beyond international athletes like you and the rest of Oyeleke and Tayo and all that. But I, 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 I feel you are also including the, the junior category in this competition. And is there also space, which I think is mandatory, uh, perhaps, I mean, for us to have um, the, the wheelchair category, which you call the special needs, so that they can also be part of um, you know, the competition. Is there, is there an open space for that? 
Yes. Um, like I said, we have the, the 20 meter distance is usually for the juniors, you know, okay. who are yet to cut their teeth in archery proper. So yes, we have that category for them. Then regarding the wheelchair stuff, we call it in archery event, we call it the open category. Yes, we have, but, um, Interestingly, most wheelchair athletes in Nigeria are concentrated in Lagos. Oh, okay. And with the current cost of flights, I think most of them can travel down, unfortunately. You know, again, that goes back to talking about um, government involvement in sports because most of these wheelchair athletes are state athletes. They oh. compete for one state or the other. So if their state uh, had funded most of them, they would have been able to fly down to to our uh, to abuja for the event because okay. we had we put out um, like a survey asking okay we would like to have you guys uh, how can we get you guys involved and most of the feedback we got was look flights are expensive uh it's not very convenient for most of them said it's not convenient to just get into a bus you know because of their special uh special conditions it will be stressing them then their cost of accommodation and all of that uh, as for who would foot that bill so that itself was a bit of a challenge in terms of organization, but we did make that provisor and we've still reached out to them that please let us know if and whenever you will be available. So we'll open up your category to have you competing because our event is all encompassing. We have children, we as much as possible, we try to encourage um, ladies to, to compete because um, the female scene in archery is still untapped as compared to the, the males, males yeah. we have more males than females and we do all we can to encourage female participation and the same with uh, the special needs athletes so yes our categories are still open for them you know but then again if they don't have the funds to fly down that could be a challenge except a sponsor would listen in right now and say okay you know what as part of our um, social corporate services to people responsibility to people we would like to sponsor 10, 20 special need athletes from Lagos or all over the country to Abuja to compete in the archery competition. Okay. That would be all welcome. Okay. Interesting. Uh, you, you wonder how we strive in the nation, especially in sports, with little or no support from the government, and we still end up um, um, being the best in Africa, being, end up being the best internationally. The state you just um, examined right now is almost the state of even the able athletes talk less of um, the special needs that we do things all ourselves we do things with our phones we do things we travel uh, that because if i should ask you are you a part of the national team would there be would there be a yes to government support would there be a yes to um, government um, initiative to ensure that you and others kept the country's flag flying um last year and also this year in terms of international competition so we hope that um, one day soonest um nigeria will get it right in terms of so much support from government involving in funds and also in promoting the sports beyond because i know at the end of the day government will take ownership well you know you get your particular level where the government to so say they want to get involved but at what era no matter how minimal it is as government got involved in all the old glories you and your team or rather the national team of archery has brought to the country okay um i hate to say this but zero zero um i, I think the closest we've support we've gotten has been from the federation and um, that's in terms of because you cannot represent the country out uh, you can represent the country if you do not register through your federation so in terms of that uh, the federation has been up and doing you know they've been helping out with registration but they'll let you know look there's no government support if you can raise your funds and go no problem so they do all the administrative uh, paperwork for you but other than that um, there's been no funding towards training there has been no funding towards acquisition of equipment and if you have to compete internationally you cannot use low-end equipment your equipment has to be high-end because they require so much precision uh, no government support for equipment even in terms of traveling airfare accommodation competition cost it's been zero and there are times like i told you we've come back and we've told them oh look this is what we have done you know we showed them and they'll be like okay fine we don't know who you are you know and unfortunately we have tried to you know what 
We are not even asking you to give us anything back. Just recognize the fact that we have gone out there, we have brought glory to Nigeria, you know, and let it be said officially that this is what these guys have done. I think the last time we had one was from, I think the last administration, when we went to South Africa, they made an announcement, um, the president recognized it, okay, we've gone, we've done X, Y, Z. And um, and that, that was it, you know. I, I think the government can do more, especially when you have young men and women who are willing to sacrifice and give to the country. I think the least that can be done is to acknowledge that effort and support them in any way they can. We understand that um, there's a rising cost in the country and uh, the government is trying to balance uh, budgets and all of that. But I also think uh, a part on the back shouldn't be out of place, you know. We, we want to thank you for being part of today's show. Uh, so much you've done for the promotion of so not just you. Uh, I, I won't say you should just mention some names that have been part of this journey because I keep saying Imana Yeleke, Taya Olasa Inde, um, you, um, Dambola, Shala mm -hmm. Demi. I know there's a female amongst you guys. Just mention to people, I mean, that apart from the ones I've mentioned, because you know, this journey is a self it's individual collectiveness, if I can use that word. I mean, individual people yeah. collectively together forming. Uh, a team to fly the Nigeria Ashu team. No government involvement, you bronze, bronze medal, silver medal. Who are the other parts of the team? If you can just mention, there's, I know there's a uh, lady among you. Oh, yes, yes. her name is Kachilon Eheni. She's uh, like the most decorated female archer in Nigeria at the moment. Okay. And I do say yeah, she's the most decorated female archer in Nigeria, both nationally and internationally. Uh, but the, one of the a key person that I think has been instrumental to my archery journey and to, I can say, um, that has led the renaissance of archery in Nigeria, um, uh, Aliyu, Aliyu Abubakar Garga. Okay. He, it was during the COVID that I met him through Tayo. And he started teaching us archery, you know. So I can say that um, he instigated or reignited archery, you know. So most of us learned, we all came together and said, you know what, let's form Arch Archery Club. And he's our president of the Arch Archery Club at the moment. And so I, I, if I had to give credit to one person who was a catalyst to the renaissance of archery in recent times in Abuja and that sport other archery clubs, that would be uh, Aliyu. Then I, also okay. within that team, we also have besides Kachalon, there's Shion. Shion has been the person, you know, going around doing most of the background work uh, that we see. Then we also have other members of the team, like there's on, somebody else also called Ali Abubakar too. Uh, he was also with us at uh, the West African Championships, where he was part of. We won gold, silver medals together too, you know. So. Yes, it's a, it's a collective effort, like you rightly said. It's not an individual effort. We've all been working together. Uh, another member of our team, um, Firefly, I, I'm not sure if you've met her. She's uh, she's also been one of uh, the first, our first appearance at um, the national, the uh, national archery competition hosted by the Federation. She was one of the people that won gold medals, you know. That was our first entrance into uh, the Nigerian archery scene, so. Yeah, they are, we have great, we have a great team. Okay. Guys who have okay. dedicated themselves to the success. I, of the I'm, I'm sure there are numerous of them. Um, that's what time could permit yeah. you to just mention, you know. Um, and that was not supposed to be part of the question, but I felt you guys have done so much, and I'm sure it's good. You've thank given you. kudos to those that have been yeah. part of it. So I want to say a big thank you for being part of the show. And also, you left one particular in, um, out is when are we expecting when. The time and the date for the 2024 at Archery um, Open Championship that's um, November 8th to, am I right? The 10th, yes, 8th to the 10th of November. Okay, 8th to the 10th of, is it two day event? Yes, it is. Okay, yes, it is. Okay. From Friday to Sunday, ends on Sunday. Oh, okay. So most of the archers will fly in by Thursday. The event kicks off on Friday morning. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, M. Tayo, for being part of today's program. Uh, thank you very much once again for the opportunity to be part of this program, for the opportunity to talk about archery. And as always, I, I would, I'm always pleased to talk about archery. Thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. And this, um, to thank you. And this is to our viewers across the globe. Um, in plot sports, um, we not just concentrate on sports that are well known, 
we give you the best in all that spot. You would like to wonder whether some of these spots exist. If you want to know whether a spot exists, this is the, last, um, the best station to know that there are other spots beyond the popular spot. The spot we call the lesser spot. And if you want to know much about them, this is where you need um, to always um, tune into. So on this note, we want to say a big thank you for being part of it. It's been a wonderful moment of the show. And that's all on the show today. I'm Mudashi Ushitu. Same time next week, we'll be giving you all what you need to know in the world of sports. Bye for now.